So the Northern Classics, they're here upon us, and it's probably my favorite time of the season. Actually, it is my favorite time of the season. But what makes these races so special are those cobbled sectors. And this is probably the only race in the calendar where pros make a huge difference in their selection of equipment for the race. So you're likely to see all sorts of different things being used. And what we're gonna look at today is how to make your bike ready for the cobblestones, but the good news is it's not just limited to cobblestones. So maybe you've got rough roads in your area or you just like a little bit of extra comfort. Today, let's have a look. So using wider tyres is a pretty popular choice at these classics. The reason being you can run a lower pressure without increasing the chance of puncturing. That's good news all times of the year, let's face it. In the Tour of Flanders though, generally the riders still use 25 millimeter wide tires, which they use in most races throughout the year. However, Greg Van Avermaet apparently has been using 28 millimeter tires this year in the run up to these races. I wonder if he used them yesterday. I didn't quite get to have a good old look though. So for the more brutal cobbles of Paris-Roubaix, you can in fact see riders using 30 millimeters, almost as standard as the width of tire, sometimes even wider. As for tire pressure, as low as 65 PSI. Just to put that into perspective, when I started racing a long time ago, it was so common, not obviously Paris-Roubaix, I didn't ride that, but you would use 23 or 21 millimeter wide tires with 120 PSI in. That's such a big difference. So not only do we see wider tires being used at those classics, we also see different tread compounds. Yep, that's right. So take for example, Continental and their competition limited tubular tire. It's actually got a different sidewall to the tire. So a little bit tougher than the standard one. So that's gonna help bouncing over those cobbles and also the tread compound. So it's slightly grippier, so slightly softer that means. So that will help you over those cobbles too, where they're quite often a little bit muddy, a little bit dusty, and they can be a tad slippery. Now, what you can also expect to see is teams roll out tires that are totally unbranded, and they're likely to be some handmade artisan numbers. So from the likes of FMB, Dugast, that kind of thing. What I'm gonna do though, is fit a pair of 28 millimeters on my bike, so I'm ready for the rough stuff. Now, nobody wants to drop a bottle whilst out riding. And to be perfectly honest with you, cobblestones and water bottle cages traditionally are not a match made in heaven, that's for sure. Uh, the reason being you're hitting those cobbles at such force, you'll quite often see bottles just fly out of those bottle cages and cause mayhem behind, believe me. Now, the pros, they've got a couple of tricks up their sleeves. What have they got? Well, they've got some grip tape and also metal bottle cages. First up, grip tape. Self-explanatory really, self-adhesive tape that you can put on the inside of your bottle cages to help give a little bit of extra resistance. Do be careful though because they do wear away at the bottles on the outside. So if you've got your favourite prized possession bottle that you really don't want to ruin, probably best to avoid using that. And also keep an eye out for any leaks. And also don't be tempted to put it on your saddle because there was a very famous photo on the internet a while ago of a time trial rider who had some grip tape on his saddle and yeah, the results were eye-watering. Ah! Now the other option is the alloy bottle cage. Now with this, basically you want to push down on it so it's a little bit tighter to actually insert the bottle. Reason being, that's then gonna give a firmer grip. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna do one of each. One carbon cage with a little bit of grip tape and one alloy one. See which one works best. So vibrations from cobblestones can be absolutely massive. I told you they were rough, didn't I? So, in the worst case scenario, a chain can actually dislodge from a chain ring and essentially leave a rider spinning in mid-air, if that makes sense. So how do the pros combat this? Well, firstly, they can use a chain catcher. So that attaches to the front derailleur mount and then sits down there on the inside. So in between the inner chain ring and the frame itself. So if your chain was to dislodge and go all the way over there, you're not gonna actually lose it totally. You're just gonna go onto the smaller chain ring rather than going down and damaging the paintwork of the bottom bracket, which is never a good look. 
Now for chain rings, something on the inner ring, like a 46 tooth, is pretty common in Paris-Roubaix. And for Tour of Flanders, 42 or 44, that's not unheard of either. The reason being, if you are to dislodge that chain onto the inner ring, your difference in cadence is gonna be minimized by having a larger inner chain ring selection. So there we are. I don't think I'll be going for a 46 tooth inner though. Although I have actually got a 46 tooth inner ring here. And if I was riding Paris-Roubaix, for instance, the Sportif, I think I'd put it on. The only problem though, you may well find yourself with at home is you need to make sure that there is a chain ring available for your chain set's particular model. So for instance, this Shimano one, I couldn't find anything bigger than a 42 commonly available. So I'd actually have to put this onto an old chain set at home and whack that on instead. Now this one is a proper pro hack. A little bit of handlebar tape on the platform of your pedal. But why? Well, actually it can help reduce a little bit of fatigue. So if you imagine how brutal those cobblestones are, 200 and what's 260 kilometers and a quarter of it roughly off road on savage ancient roads. So what you're gonna do is cut up that tape and put it across the center of your pedal and actually it works a bit like double wrapping your handlebar tape. So essentially you're removing just a little bit of vibration through your stiff carbon soled cycling shoes. Now the second benefit of that tape in that pedal is actually that it's gonna keep your feet slightly more secure in the pedals because it's not uncommon, believe me, to actually see a rider's foot bounce out of the pedal. So it is gonna make clipping in and out a little bit tougher. So pay particular attention at road junctions. Otherwise, there'll be the embarrassing moment of falling over because you can't get your foot out. So just be aware of that. So most riders, they tend to actually ride the cobblestones on the tops of the handlebar. Why? Well, you can have a very loose grip over the handlebars so that you're not holding on for dear life because that's not what you want to be doing. You want to essentially let the bike find its own path through the cobblestones. Plus, you can put a little bit of extra weight back on the rear wheel so that you're not putting everything on the front end, which could end pretty badly on cobbles. Uh, now, obviously, you're riding up there. You can't brake there, can you? Because when you're hitting that pave at speed, the last thing you want to do is start moving your hands around a lot, especially if you're not confident on them. So a number of pros actually fit these cross-top brake levers. They look like, what, miniature mountain bike brakes, don't they? So the reason behind them really is that you can still brake whilst up there. So if there was an incident in front of you, it's not a problem to come to a stop, as well as being able to just feather the brakes to be able to control your speed too. Now, using cross-top brake levers is not as common as it once was when it seemed like every other rider in the peloton was using them for Paris-Roubaix. However, in more recent times, two riders have actually used them to success. So that's Greg Van Avermaet and John Degenkolb. Uh, now, I've had to actually borrow Stevie G's bike, one of my colleagues, to show them because I can't fit them onto my bike, sadly, and I love those integrated handlebars. So good news for Greg Van Avermaet and John Degenkolb. I won't be able to use them, so therefore I won't be able to challenge them. Sorry, lads. Now, if you can't brake whilst riding on the tops, it makes sense that you can't change gear whilst riding up there too. But you can. How? With electronic gears, that's how. So if you're using Shimano or SRAM, you can in fact use a climbing shifter here on the top of the handlebar or the R9150 shifters from Shimano 2. Or in SRAM's case, the blips. They simply mount up here, connect to your electronic shifters, and you can then change gear up here on the pave. Also, another option is the sprint shifters. So from Shimano, I've got sprint shifters fitted down here. Now they only actually control the rear derailleur, so nothing with the front. SRAM's blips though, that you can control both derailleurs. So again, you can simply fit them down here on the drops and you can change gear. Although admittedly, you're not gonna be riding much on the drops on the cobblestone. Some riders though in the past have done it, Tom Boonham for instance. Now, one of the easiest and most common things you're gonna see on a pro's bike at Paris-Roubaix, and in most cases, Tour of Flanders too, is double wrapping of handlebar tape. And what is it? Exactly what it says on the tin. It's just putting on another layer of bar tape. And to simplify the process, really, you're gonna to have to remove just a few centimeters here at the end of the handlebar, and then a few centimeters here at the top. So with a knife or a very sharp blade, cut away that layer and then remove it, and the same there, and then just wrap your bar tape. 
Now there is a huge variety of handlebar tape available. Most riders though, they will opt for using exactly the same as what they've already got fitted. Therefore, they know exactly how it feels and how it handles in the wet because handlebar tape can become slippery. And if you're not used to it, yeah, could well you lose your grip. Now, something else which riders do use, but it's not always instantly recognizable, is in fact an old inner tube underneath the handlebar tape. No, it's not inflated, don't worry. It's simply cut up into sections and that rubber just provides a little bit extra dampening. Now, interestingly, Tom Boonen, who was three-time winner of Tour of Flanders, four times winner of Paris-Roubaix, I think he knows a thing or two about riding on the cobbles, he never used to use gloves. That's right, never used gloves in those races. The reason being, he said he could get a better feel for the roads. So there we are. Maybe it could be to reduce the chance of getting any blisters from a pair of gloves rubbing on the palms. Who knows? Right, you are ready now to go out and hit that pave. Your hands are gonna be comfortable, your feet aren't gonna come out, your chain's not gonna come off, and most of all, you're gonna have so much fun doing it. Remember to like and share this video with your friends too. And also, if you want one of these limited edition Cobbled Classics t-shirt, head over to the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. And for another great video, this time how to double wrap your handlebars, click just down here.